Welcome everyone to Career Happy Hour. This is Andrew Beach, Executive Coach. I'm a teacher of self-education. I help professionals like you communicate their value to find great career opportunities faster. If you can, please uh, join us in the chat over here. Let me know what questions you have. This is free coaching for you. Uh, so I'm here to help support your success, whatever it takes. Uh, we're going to continue our book club, of course, but uh, I did want to let you know that this is free time for you. If you have any career coaching questions related to resume, LinkedIn best practices, networking, interviewing, market planning, um, that sort of thing, then I'm happy to answer. So leave your questions down below and we'll get to those in just a moment. By the way, where are you joining from? Let me know in the chat where you're joining from. I, of course, am in the home studio here in Portland, Oregon. Uh, so good to see all of you. Welcome. Uh, also, share this with your network. If you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, or perhaps LinkedIn, go ahead and click the share button and share it on your private um, or your, your personal social networks there. Let everybody know that this is available as a free resource every Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, that I will be here answering your questions. And yes, people are getting hired. Yes, people are interviewing. Yes, the market is still moving forward even in today's season. Even in today's season. So things are good. Uh, I am going to continue our talk about, uh, good to see you, Ron, Eric, Deborah, good to have you. Uh, go ahead and let me know if you have any questions. Angela, good to see you. Ha <laughs> ha, Portland. Excellent. Yes. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad we met at a networking event, Angela. Appreciate you dropping in. Good to see you. Um, we're going to continue reading in the book. So uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. And maybe we'll handle that after. Uh, so the book that we're reading, actually, is my favorite networking book. I think we all know why we should network. What we don't typically have is someone telling us how to network uh, in terms of job search, not just a networking conversation or a networking meeting, but how do I implement a networking system as relates to job search? And this book does that. It's the National Business Employment Weekly Job, uh, excuse me, National Business Employment Weekly book on networking. It's also got the Wall Street Journal on the top here. It's insider's strategies for tapping the hidden market where most jobs are found. Now, you should be able to find um, the link to this book. It's out of print. I don't, I'm not here to sell the book. If you want to buy the book, go right ahead. Uh, I think it's a fantastic book. I recommend it highly. Um, Douglas Richardson, I think, is here on, on LinkedIn. So if you want to give him a, a high five for this book, I, he would probably appreciate it. So good to have you here. Um, awesome. So let's continue in the book. If you have your book, uh, we'll go ahead and read along in chapter nine. Chapter nine is planning logistics and keeping track. So here we go. Planning logistics and keeping track. Page 165. After you've invested two or more weeks in an energetic networking campaign, you'll find that your desk, purse, wallet, pockets, and briefcase are overflowing with slips of paper. They will include cocktail napkins with apparently random phone numbers bleeding through the design, business cards with other phone numbers scribbled on the back, matchbooks covered with miniature hieroglyphics, five by seven cards covered front and back with detailed notes, and magazine cards on which are written the names of people you don't even remotely recognize. These are the artifacts of aggressive networking, the data dump where all the information you've been collecting is first stashed. This is raw information, untabulated, disorganized, often undated or unattributed. What separates systematic and effective networkers from bulls just cr crashing around in contacts China shops is how these raw materials are processed and managed. Unless religiously controlled, integrated and planned, Networking can produce too much information, not too little. When this happens, many networkers deluged with data and faced with far more to do than time to do it in, throw in the towel. Don't do that. Don't throw in the towel, please. They grab for the latest or most promising information and let the rest 
drift out of sight and out of mind. They forget to follow up. Ah, oh, it's a huge, huge mistake. Or forget whom they were supposed to follow up with. Even worse. They may give themselves a well-deserved day of rest, which is totally understandable. You can take a break from your search, absolutely. Or maybe two days or a week. When they decide to regain momentum or try to regain control, they're confronted with all sorts of time-consuming tasks that might look like this. For example, developing, integrating, purging, and updating the networking master list. How do you keep your networking master list, by the way? Do you have one? Where do you keep it? Prioritizing contacts, as in a A, B, C, D prioritization, proximity, perspective, power, phone versus in person. Or making phone calls to schedule meetings, calling back on the phone calls that don't connect, keeping track of how often the calls have been made, writing request letters to the contacts who should be seen in person when we're done with the virus, of course. Following up on networking request letters, keeping an accurate calendar of meetings scheduled, drop dead dates for follow-up letters, conferences, lunches, and conventions, keeping a current tracking system that allows retrieval of information on the people seen, when they were seen, what was discussed in the meetings, and what action steps come next. Maintaining a current list of networking names, addresses, and phone numbers. Taking the time to summarize and synthesize all that has been learned as the job search has progressed. Objectives, attractive target industries or organizations, people, and personalities. Just a quick pause right here. Uh, today, we have lots of tools to do this. Uh, we have spreadsheets. We have uh, Outlook. The problem is we, we need a centralized space to do this. And what I would recommend is, is use what works for you and use what's readily available to you, something that you're comfortable with. Uh, don't try to create something new. For many networkers, the confrontation with all these administrative tasks is followed by what computer types call a head crash. The whole system shuts down, circuits take themselves offline, and an overwhelming urge develops to watch the afternoon ball game on TV. This denial response usually is accompanied by a pervasive sense of guilt and the terrible fear that other people out there aren't goofing off and are therefore building a competitive advantage in the job market. Yes, fear. False evidence appears real. That's a good point. I'm sure none of that has happened to you folks, right? Recognizing and resisting the rescue fantasy. Recognizing and resisting the rescue fantasy. A common psychological response to such stress is what might be called the rescue fantasy, a sense often tinged with a slight euphoria that there's no point in putting all sorts of systems and procedures in place when you aren't going to be in the job market long anyway. Huge mistake. Most of the people that um, I've coached, the number one thing they wish they would have done was keep an active network, even while they were working. Your neighbor has confided, I know some folks who will be real interested in you. The headhunter has said, your credentials are very impressive, very marketable. Perhaps the last time you ran a job search, your very first interview produced a good fit. It happens. Perhaps you feel that you're so qualified in your field that your world of work will seek you out. That's, <laughs> it doesn't always happen. This rescue fantasy results in a tendency toward passivity. Passivity. Yuck. Even among people who long have been high achievers, active performers, and strong self-starters. Don't confuse this tendency with laziness. Indeed, people acting out a rescue fantasy may show an unusually high level of energy, but their energy isn't being directed towards structured, controlled job search behavior. Often, job seekers mired in this kind of approach avoidance behavior report moving restlessly or compulsively from one task to the next, mowing the lawn, taking the car in for new brakes, cleaning up the study so I can really get going on this job search thing, fixing the screen door, and so on. Typically, this activity is purposeful and has some utility. Geez, Gladys, it's not like I'm sitting home watching daytime TV or something. The tie between temperament and purpose. The tie between temperament and purpose. The tendency to confuse motion with action may be even more marked among those 
who have little natural inclination toward detail-oriented or repetitive activity. According to the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, or MBTI, by nature, about 60% of us, so-called S-types in MBTI jargon, are fairly comfortable dealing with detail, marshalling and organizing facts and plugging along with repetitive chores until a task is done. Many others, however, find dealing with detail particularly frustrating. These N-types prefer to look at the big picture, devising strategies and leaving their implementation to others. They understand the crucial importance of details, but they are far more comfortable dealing with concepts and abstractions. They want to know the most efficient approach to getting this job search over. And they hate it when they're told there's no such thing as an efficient job search because the job market is inherently disorganized. Couldn't be the truer words. The best you can hope, the best you can hope for is an effective job search, which means trying everything, running down every detail, and plugging along until the right job is found. As a general proposition, S-types run better job searches than N-types do. They're more methodical, better organized, less impatient, and less distressed when each and every networking meeting doesn't produce big hits or immediate results. Reminded that what goes around comes around. The N-types retort, how do I get it to go around faster? Meet more people. How about that? Meet more and follow up with more people. For your information, the reality check. Reality check. The rescue fantasy and other job search stresses are symptoms of a broader syndrome, a sense of losing control. Reestablishing and maintaining control during a job search is a matter of giving equal attention to four factors. Number one, developing and conveying focus. Number two, developing and maintaining structure in your efforts. Number three, following up making sure the next step gets taken or taking it yourself. Number four, maintaining a high activity level in all job search tasks. So far we've emphasized the focus, follow-up, and high activity themes. Now let's look at some ways of developing the most important element of control, which is structure. That could be also translated into schedule. Planning forward, tracking back. Planning forward, tracking back. Most job seekers tend to spend a lot more time organizing for what's to come than making sure they can retrieve information about what's already happened. How many of us, for example, crumple up telephone return call slips and throw them away the moment we return the call? There, that's done, our subconscious says. Later, we are on our hands and knees in front of the wastebasket trying to find the slip that shows the name and number of the person offering the discount rate on floppy disks. Oh my gosh, isn't that hilarious? That's where an update should be done. When networking, it's absolutely essential that you have systems in place, both to schedule future activity and to trace, trace, every single pass call, letter, or meeting. For most people, this means having a number of systems running in parallel, which is unfortunate. There are a lot of um, CRM system, customer relationship management systems that you could invest in, but um, you might consider some of the, the main ones, uh, at least that I would. I use Evernote. Some people use OneNote. If you have another suggestion, please leave that in the chat. Number one, a month at a glance diary to give you a quick and global look at your future and past meeting activity. Um, that brings up Getting Things Done, or GTD, if you guys are familiar with that. It's a, it's a pretty decent system if you're using something manual. Two, a week at a glance diary that shows your schedule of immediate meetings and provides a little space for an address, the referral's name, and any other relevant notations regarding each contact. This is something you could probably just run through your calendar either on Google or Outlook. So that's not uncommon that you could have, you could run this through your contacts on Outlook and track everything there if you wanted to, if that's something you're in all the time anyway. A daily to-do form that charts first calls, callbacks, meetings, follow-up calls, and other activity ticklers. Prior days list should be kept chronologically for historical purposes. Um, so you could use a, a manual um, operation, a manual technique. Uh, that's where getting things done would be appropriate. Uh, but having access to that information if it's outside of that rhythm uh, is certainly helpful. Four, 
A current master networking list, usually updated weekly, that records and prioritizes each contact. Prior week's list should be kept for historical purposes. So just a, a side note on that one, I really encourage people to have maybe a list of 12 people that you keep in touch with on a regular basis. Of course you'll have more, but there's a top 10 or a 12, top 12 list. Uh, and the reason I pick 12 typically is because it breaks evenly into a quarter. So you only have to contact one person a week. Uh, that way you hit each person uh, once a quarter. Number five, a chronological master activity summary. If not already included in the master networking list, that tracks for each contact, each contact, here's what you would track. The dates of A, the initial referral, so when did they initially get referred? B, the initial call, and all of the subsequent phone contacts with a summary of the purpose and outcome of each, so like a call list. C, a summary of the content of each meeting, and D, the names of referrals obtained in each meeting. That's really helpful to do on a spreadsheet or some uh, place that you can have it readily available to you. Six, a five by seven card catalog. This is something that my mom used to do when she was in sales. She kept a card catalog. Uh, Rolodex or computerized address list. I would suggest computerized if every contact and referral. This is best kept separate. In fact, you could probably do this in, in your uh, LinkedIn too. Uh, you could have their LinkedIn profile linked to your uh, system. This is the best kept separate from your regular business Rolodex and is useful if you want to reach a contact but don't want to wade through your master activity summary chronologically to find the phone number. It's typically going to be in your, your mobile device anyway or in your Google or Outlook. You may also use it to note care and feeding contacts for your existing network on a long-term basis. When you called, when you sent congratulatory letters, when you sent greeting or holiday cards. Now, some people like to track that in the calendar, but I find that problematic because then you're going to have a series of calendar events that if you don't have those attached to a contact, it's going to be hard to find those. So I, I would keep your notes in one place and uh, manage your, your follow-ups and your conversations, uh, reminders for those in your calendar. Detail-oriented people who love structuring things say they get excited just looking at the list of all these control mechanisms. Their minds fly immediately to how they will format them how long it will take to make daily entries, even what time of day will be set aside to keep the tracking planning system current. Concept-oriented people say the prospect of all this record-keeping is daunting. A common rationalization is, it looks like it may be more trouble than it's worth. What you choose to do is a function of your temperament, your innate organizational capabilities, and or your need for a sense of control. The record shows However, that superbly organized and controlled searches tend to end faster and produce more choice than to throw it, throw all the cocktail napkins and matchbook covers into an accordion file approach. The more sophisticated your system, the more demanding they are of your time. Once set up, they won't update themselves. Some networks set aside one morning a week for updating and cleaning up their tracking planning systems. The problem with this approach, ooh, there's a problem one morning a week. Uh, let's see. The problem with this approach is that one missed week produces a deluge of data to process the next week. The fa in the face of spending many hours making and updating entries, some job seekers let it slide. The magnificently planned systems are abandoned. The job search becomes a day-to-day, -day, make it up as you go along affair and valuable information disappears from the job seeker's grasp forever. One way you can uh, prioritize that is, you know, think about the people that are in a, maybe a hiring manager capacity or a recommender capacity, or um, who you think would be influential to your future and prioritize those folks, especially if a, a job is on the line, right? If it's just a casual contact, you, you know, you may not need to do that. Whether you prefer manual tracking systems where you push paper or automated programs where you manipulate bits and bytes is pretty much a matter of personal preference. And that's still true today. I've seen people with three ring binders. And your level of computer literacy. Beyond the bulkiness of maintaining manual files, just knowing that the hard copy is forever retrievable may be comforting. Networkers who are adept on the PC find working in paper incredibly archaic. 
Although uh, I have to admit, I like doing both occasionally. I do the ones on paper if that's all I have because it keeps me in the networking meeting. As soon as I introduce electronics in a networking meeting, uh, there's a distraction. And so it's nice to have manual paper. And then I just take pictures of those notes and put them in my Evernote so I have it. And then uh, I maybe type something in uh, to summarize those notes. Networkers who are adept at the PC find working on paper incredibly archaic. They report that it's fun to design their own database filing system, use one of the increasingly number of user-friendly database software programs now commercially available, or take an existing system and adapt it for the demands of networking job search planning. If you're going to track activity manually, it makes sense to design and use a series of forms that promote uniformity in the way you elicit structure and retrieve information. There's no particular magic to the layout of such forms as long as they work for you. A weekly job search plan, while resembling a standard week at a glance calendar, forces the job seeker to review and think of each of the many interrelated activities that go into a comprehensive job search. A condensed form can easily be scaled up. One job seeker who has a background in military project management created a continuous wall chart timeline that now extends across two walls of his basement. It's his life at a glance. Interesting. Automated structure. Automated structure. A trip to the local PC dealer or software vendor may either delight or bewilder a networker looking for organizational aids. The trade-off usually seems to be between user-friendly applications that can be learned quickly but don't allow much custom tailoring and sophisticated interactive database products that can be expanded, contracted, folded, or pleated to present information in almost any form the user finds most practical. Many bundled programs contain basic word processing, spreadsheet, calendar, and list generation functions in one package. In some programs, it's possible to more rapidly and easily for, from easily from function to function, composing letters, doing merged mailings, and updating lists. The downside of many of these simpler programs is that they require item-by-item -item information entry, and the information is presented only in a certain prescribed format. For more sophisticated computer jockeys, highly interactive databases can be developed that distinguish between summarizing past activity and tackling future tasks, such as generating daily to-do lists. Figure 9.1 shows a sample page from a hard copy printout of the networking status report of Charlie before commencing his job search. Charlie had been using a marketing database called Act One to develop a specialized medical services business. When the market for his services went soft and he chose to discontinue marketing efforts, he converted the system to serve as his networking planner, tracker, notepad, and nag. Charlie keeps his computer on 24 hours a day. Computers don't mind that. When he sits down to make a phone call, he has the phone number, contact's name, and history, and next planned step visible in front of him. He chooses to use a headset for phone calls. People talking with him can hear the click-click of a keyboard strokes as he enters and updates relevant information. Immediately after getting back from meetings, Charlie tries to update the database while the information and next steps are fresh in his mind. That's important. It's not that uh, it's not possible. If that's not possible, he allocates his first working hour each day to making his database current, answering ads, or using the word processor to generate other correspondence. Sophisticated database can be reconfigured to add or delete fields, specific items of information. Charlie continues to fiddle with his Act 1 variations. After networking for a while, he found it useful to have the program print out only the last items of activity. His master file continues to log a complete chronology history of all activity, as shown in figure 9.1. Running a full printout from A to Z would consume a lot of paper. That's true. You may want to experiment with a variety of approaches, discarding any that don't produce immediate practical benefits to you. There's the key, immediate practical benefits. Building the learning curve for mastering new computer applications may seem frustrating, especially if, you, if what you want most is to get out there and start networking. But in the long run, the ser servicing demands of a good system will enhance your self-discipline without making you feel like a slave to it. 
Charlie, for example, knows his system is demanding but finds it a worthwhile source of structure and stability. If you ask Charlie how his networking is going, he'll tell you, and he'll tell you exactly. And I quote, some people say that I spend more time servicing the database than the value it provides is worth. True, it does require an absolute commitment to keep on top of data entry. But the fact is that I don't use this system because I'm a natural with computers, although I am, or because I'm a detail freak. I do it because by nature I'm terribly disorganized. Without this system to police me, I'd be lost. Yes, I spend a lot of time giving my policeman what it needs to police me, but for me, it's more than worth it. Not only do I stay on top of what has become a very large database of names and activities, but when I put the system to use, I can do certain things very quickly. I don't have lots of binders and folders and indexes and cross-references. This system basically does it all. So there you go. So there are some things that we can look at. That's chapter nine, by the way. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and put those in the chat. I'm happy to answer. Uh, hi, Yathish. Good to see you. Chelsea, you're back. Chelsea's back. Good to have you guys. So if you have questions, I'm happy to answer. Uh, if you want to pick up that book, I think it's absolutely worth it. Um, there's a couple things that I think that we could probably talk about. Uh, and that is, let's go back to our question and answer page here. Um, you know, I, there's a couple things I would recommend if you're, if you're approaching job search and networking uh, from the first time and trying to keep track of things. I would get in the habit of um, using the devices that you already have with you. So for me, that's my iPhone. I'm really good at, at keeping track of things in there or have things available to me there, either through your contact database or um, I have Evernote is one of the tools that I use pretty frequently. And so I can have an interaction. I can take notes in my journal. I really believe in manual note taking at a network meeting. So if you're at a network meeting, take manual notes and then you could take a picture or you can um, transcribe those notes or uh, condense those notes into your system when you get back to uh, your office, to your house. Uh, the other thing I've seen people do is they've actually used uh, Google Docs and in Google Docs, every document is actually its own link. So you could have um, a Google document that has just a person's name. And that name is all the notes you have on that specific person and follow-up items. Uh, that's kind of problematic because there's no task list anywhere, right? Even though Google has a task list, it's not going to be integrated into that document. So you'll have to have some other way to keep track of tasks and reminders. Uh, and then they keep a spreadsheet with all of their, uh, a Google sheet with all of those names in it. But uh, that name then would have a link to the Google Doc that has all the notes. So it's really nice. Um, it's, I think that's one of the advantages over, you know, um, Office 365 is that uh, you can have a link to each individual document. But what do I know? <laughs> so good. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask. In fact, you know, the other thing I'm interested in knowing from you is um, you know how, how is everybody how's everybody doing out there? What questions do you have about what's happening in the marketplace? Um, do you have any questions at all about what's happening in the marketplace? I know a lot of companies are now in the process, at least from what I've heard, making plans for reopening. So there's um, a lot of that's in the works, and that's certainly going to hinge on the capacity of each geography and the number of perhaps people infected by virus and whatnot. So it's, it's something that companies are really looking at initiating uh, pretty soon. So good. Any questions? I'm here to answer. Just put them in the chat. If you want, you could share this with somebody. Uh, that would be really helpful. Tag somebody either in the comments that you think would benefit from, from hearing this. Let's see. I'm wondering if my... I think there might be questions here. I just don't see them. All right. Well, if you don't have any questions, we can call it a day. Uh, I will put um, some resources in the chat, um, a little 
video that I put together on YouTube on how to use Google Docs as a job search CRM. So it's just kind of a high level overview on how people have been able to do that and, and be successful at it. So any questions out there? Oh, thanks Elizabeth. Appreciate that. Good to see your face in the chat. Awesome. All right, guys. Book name and author again, please. The book name is the National Business Employment Weekly. It's the book on networking. Uh, there should be a link, I believe, in the chat or in the, the notes for this particular session. So if you go in the notes for the session, you should be able to find it. Uh, but I will get the link and put it in uh, in the chat for you. So let me put it over here. Okay, it's in that chat. And then I'll have to go over to LinkedIn. Okay, bear with me. Does the job market open up in a good way? Let me see what this says. Does the job market open up in a good way? What job areas do you think will boom? I think all job areas are going to come back. I think the bigger question we all have to have is how they're going to come back. And some may come back faster than others. There's going to be precautions, things that people are going to do. Um, many governmental, I think, agencies are going to require protocols. And they're going to see each company's plans for reopening and what protocols they'll have in place. Uh, so I think it's really going to be a – so I guess the question I would have is if you have expertise – in putting together protocols for reestablishing business operations, that would be an area that I think you could have good success, uh, especially if you're doing consulting. Um, but I, I don't think there's any job areas that aren't going to come back. Uh, they're just It's just a matter of how much time it's going to take to come back because the, the, the economy really was on a good stretch there. And um, that at least that's what I felt. There was always more candidates than or more roles than had candidates to fill them and so companies were uh, always out looking for new people and, and really couldn't find them so there was a shortage so it, it might actually help the economy um, kind of refresh itself really even though it's uh, not doing so well at the moment <laughs> because everything shut down I mean we essentially took the economy and pressed pause and so what happens when we unpause? It's not going to come uh, immediately back to life for every single industry. So keep, keep that in mind. Uh, so I put the link to the book in the, the uh, chat. Hopefully you see that. Uh, and that should be there for your use. Any other questions? Let me see. Deborah, did you get that? The book link should be there. And the, and the link, I think, to the... Um... Yeah, it doesn't look like... Okay, my apologies. It doesn't look like the link to the book is in the, uh, the notes for this. So my apologies. Um, the service I use called Restream, they just um, updated their infrastructure. So I think there's some challenges there. Ah, all right, Nick, congratulations. I may be in a situation that I may be receiving an offer for a job that is not my first pick, but I feel I must take it. What if my preferred job comes to me uh, in the future? That's a very common thing, actually, um, especially in the market we just had that people would be getting multiple offers. I guess it depends on how far down the, the path, and each person's situation is a little bit different, of course, but how far down the path are you in interviewing with these different companies, okay? So if it's a what-if scenario for a job that you haven't even started interviewing, you haven't even been promised an interview, you don't even know if that company's in play until this thing is over, then I would say bird in the hand. So it, my answer today would be bird in the hand. If you asked me that same question eight weeks ago, I would do what I can to stretch out a negotiation. And that can actually um, burn you today, I think. Because people are, you know, they need you as much as you probably need a job. Um, so that would be my advice is I would take what I have. Uh, if you, ha However, if you have two companies that are both interviewing you and you have two offers in hand, then that's a different story. 
Okay. But I, I would, I, you know, to be honest with you, Nick, I would assume that there's always something better, even if you had something better. So if you, even if you got your preferred job, great. Always have the mindset that there's something better. What will that do? That will help you develop yourself. It'll help you to continue planning. It'll give you motivation for networking. So I, I don't know. That's something that I would think about. But I, I mean, I don't know your specific situation. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. So you have a offer coming. Now you don't, if you have two offers coming, different, different story, right? Uh, what, I, what I've seen is most people get into that situation when they've interviewed down to the finals with two companies or two or more companies. And one is just taking longer to piece together the offer. And so if they both have presented you with um, promises of an offer pending, then I would certainly be conversing more regularly with those hiring teams uh, to make sure that they're pushing it forward as fast as they can. Um, specifically the hiring manager, that's typically the person that might be the one uh, that's pushing this thing forward. So keep, keep that in mind. Well, I guess I should get rid of the networking book there, right? You guys probably want to see me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Anyhow, talking about, probably saw my hands moving behind the, the book there. Sorry about that. Does that help, Nick? Hopefully you got that answer. You're welcome, Deborah. Awesome. Good to see all of you. I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, we'll catch you next Friday. Let everybody know uh, and maybe even share this with your network. Uh, I really appreciate uh, anybody um, sharing this so that we can uh, expand our reach and get more people involved. Uh, this is free coaching for you. So um, if you need more information about me or my products and services, you can certainly look in my profile and schedule time on my calendar. All right, folks, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Friday.